Well, first of all, as a doctor, I'm sure you understand that we do need health care reform. And I didn't know what that Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So that's yeah. all of that. My question to you is I hear a lot about stopping bills, but you've been a representative of mine since 2002. When the Republicans controlled Congress and the Senate, why didn't you introduce and pass a Well, for those who are looking to attention, I have introduced major health care legislation, yes, particularly the with physician workforce issues every year that I've been. Yes. Yeah, I've introduced legislation to make a candidate into the, uh, into the Medicare reimbursement system, and certainly medical justice reform that we've accomplished here in Texas has been a big part of the, the themes that I've pushed. The Republicans, and, and it, I'm, I'm not supposed to really talk about this because my leadership, my leadership doesn't like it. But it's easier to poke holes at someone else than it is to defend your own yes. product. We actually have a bill, which, which I participated in, in writing, and we worked late into the night, and many nights uh, during the spring, to have something that would be, uh, you can't fight something with nothing was the thought, and, and we needed and we needed a bill. Now, there have been two problems, one technical and one logistical. The technical is that because the Democrats have so bogged down the Congressional Budget Office and the the bill writing part of the, of, of the House office, we can't get anything out of, of, of that when we submit something. The Congressional Budget Office won't pick up our, our product. Obviously, you can't come up with a bill if you don't know what it's going to cost or what the coverage numbers are going to be because it wouldn't pass any, any sort of giggle test. The other thing, though, is that my leadership has made us, as correctly pointed out, uh, this thing is imploding under its own weight right now. And, one of the political calculations is someone else is self-destructing, you don't want to get in between the other weapons. So, I <laughs> can <laughs> argue that the political is that one way or the other. Suffice it to say, there are ideas on the Republican side, there are good ideas. I reached out to the Blue Dog Democrats. I went to Henry Waxman's office in January. Oh, yeah. I said, Henry, I gave up a 25-year medical career to be here when this happened. I don't know if I'll definitely be a no vote. Let's talk about some of the things that are going to be in this bill. He thanked me very much for showing up, and that's the last I heard of yes. Wow. So that was the response I got when I went to the other side, had in hand, said, you guys want, you control all of all the marbles, let's work together on this. You have three Democratic chairs, Henry Waxman, George Miller, and Pete Stark, all from California, all elected in 1974 after the Nixon investigation. This is something they have wanted to do their entire political career. So this product that you see today, HR 3200, is the product of, of their wish list. Now, if we can get back in September, because of what you all have done, yeah. slowing this thing down, if we can come back in September and talk about how do we solve the problem for 8 million people who have pre-existing conditions and have their insurance taken away when they get a yeah. yeah. How do we solve that problem? Yeah. Would we solve that problem? Yeah. The answer is yes. We wouldn't necessarily have to break the budget to do it. We wouldn't necessarily have to break the budget. So the real question is, when we get back in September, will we be willing to ignore our leadership and work together and deliver something that would actually work for the American people. And that's what remains to be seen.